Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. So today's video, I am going to be making a follow on from the video that I made last week when I started talking about what happens to our skin in the winter, why it gets drier as it gets colder, and also why this is such an issue for people like myself who are prone to eczema, or if you have psoriasis or xerosis, or any other kind of dry inflammatory skin condition. So I briefly mentioned last week that it is really important to be using moisturizers, and especially to protect the healthy skin that you have. But I didn't really go into much detail on it. So I thought in this week's video, I would give you guys a little bit more information about how moisturizers work, give you some practical tips, and also just tell you exactly how you can use them in a way that is most effective for you. So I did actually make a video already about moisturizers, but I have decided to take that one down just because I've kind of changed my mind about some of the things I've said in that video, and obviously I want to make sure that everything that I put out is kind of the most correct, and has kind of scientific backing uh, and things like that. So if you're wondering why I'm sort of contradicting myself and some things I say in this video, then that is why. If this is your first time here, then welcome. And I make videos about skin and health and hair and all that goodness. So if you like any of the above, then definitely don't forget to click the little subscribe button and also the bell notification button. So before I dive straight into moisturizers and how moisturizers work, let's have a closer look at the skin and how the skin actually gets moisture naturally. So if we look at the skin, it is made up of three key layers. So we have the top layer, which is the layer that you can see and you can touch, that is the epidermis. Then we have the middle layer, which is called the dermis. And then we have a layer underneath, or the kind of fatty layer, called the hypodermis. So the top layer, the epidermis, is actually mostly made of dense skin cells. So those skin cells are constantly being renewed from the bottom layer, or from the layer underneath rather, the dermis, and is moving up and moving up towards the surface until eventually they shed off. The dermis is kind of the more, I'd say, alive layer. So all the moisture that you find in the epidermis does not come from the epidermis itself. It actually moves up from the blood vessels and the capillaries that you find in the dermis. So all the water and all the moisture particles that are provided from the dermis, they move up from the dermis, up through the epidermis, and eventually they reach the very surface when they evaporate out. This is something that's called transepidermal water loss. Trans meaning through, epidermal meaning the, the epidermis, water loss, self-explanatory, or you can also call it chul if you like kind of awkward scientific acronyms. <laughs> so the moisture in your skin is really important for two key reasons. Firstly, it keeps it supple, it keeps it flexible. The second one is that it actually helps to keep the dead skin cells in place so they don't shed off too quickly. Now there are lots of other proteins and other types of substances that are in this kind of matrix between the cells but moisture is one of them and it definitely contributes to this factor so what happens when your skin gets dry so your skin gets dry when it is technically at a moisture level of 10 percent or below and this is when the water or the moisture is being lost through the epidermis much quicker than it can be replenished from the dermis underneath and that is when that that sort of gluey function that moisture has, it starts to diminish, and that's when we start to see the, the skin cells start to shed off and flake off a lot more than it would with sort of supple skin. And what I've also done is I have actually rummaged in my bathroom cabinet and pulled out all the different moisturizers and lotions and creams that I had in there, because if you are like me, you have spent thousands of pounds, hit the like button if you can relate, on different types of moisturizers throughout your years. Um, so yeah, so I thought I could give you, have a look at some of these and give you some examples. So the first type of main ingredient that you will find in moisturizers is something called occlusives. And occlusives work by essentially creating a barrier layer on the top layer of your skin, which prevents any of that transepidermal water loss from happening in the first place. So you'll find these are quite thick. Um, you will find these are quite sticky, they're sort of your more traditional, I suppose, moisturizers, things that they, you know, things like oils, things like other quite like natural products are often occlusive. But the thing about occlusives is what they, what they don't do is that they do not replace any moisture that is in the epidermis if it has been lost. In and of itself, it is more protective than it is replenishing. So this is just something to bear in mind. So here are some examples of occlusives that I could find in my bathroom cabinet. So my first one here is castor oil, which is probably my favorite natural occlusive. I use this a lot on my lips. It really, really helped to heal my lip eczema. You can watch my lip eczema video if you want more details around that. Then we've got petrolatum here or brand name Vaseline, which is obviously very common, very easy to use. 
And then most oils are actually functioning as occlusives. So here we've got a rose oil, but other natural examples of occlusives that you could use are things like beeswax, things like olive oil, things like safflower oil. These all work as occlusives on the skin. So the second type of main ingredient that you will find in moisturizers, which is much lighter in the form of creams and lotions, is something called an emollient. And emollients, what they do, as opposed to the occlusives, is they actually replenish the lost moisture that is, uh, if it has been lost from, from the epidermal layer. So it actually goes into the skin and starts to replenish that matrix that is between the skin cells. So these are the emollients that I could find in my bathroom cabinet. Like I said, some of them will have a mixture of occlusive and emollient properties, but emollient is the kind of main mode of action that these have. So as you can see, most of my lotions and creams are emollients. Um, I think this is because I have sort of naturally quite dry skin, so it does often need replenishment um, rather than just protection. So some of the favorites I'm just gonna point out here, Cetaphil I use a lot. Um, I haven't actually had to use it that much since I've been in Dubai, which has been really nice, but I talk about Cetaphil a lot. I think it's really nice, um, really sort of light rather than too rich. So you can see that here. Um, I think that that is just a very good all-rounder for when you're jumping out the shower or something like that, you can put it on everywhere. So one of my new favorites is actually this one, which is an E45 um, eczema repair cream. I just bought this at Boots. Boots is a common pharmacy here in the UK. For those of you who are not in the UK, I'm not sure if it is available outside of the UK, but I'm sure that will be something similar um, wherever you are watching this from. I've also got a face cream here. Um, I couldn't actually use this too much because it did make me break out, but when I have dry skin on my face, I do use this. This is my favorite hand cream. It is a Nivea Q10 anti-age hand cream. And then we have something from Body Shop that I bought a while ago. And then this is a natural emollient, which is whipped shea butter. So that's an example of a natural emollient, which does also have some inclusive properties because it is quite uh, sort of oily. But what I would say about natural moisturizers and natural things is that you do have to be very, very careful. Make sure if you're gonna use one, try it on a little patch of skin first, especially since shea butter is made from a nut. So do try and be careful with, with natural moisturizers before you use them, because obviously you don't want to cause a reaction to anything. Now the third type of key ingredient that you will find in moisturizers is something called a humectant. And humectants, they function a little bit differently from occlusives and emollients in that they actually attract lots of water to them. So they will draw water from the atmosphere or the surrounding environment and hold it in place in the skin. Now, that sounds great. <laughs> you say, let's just use humectants all the time. But actually, again, if you use too strong a humectant, if you use it too much, or if you use it incorrectly in some way, what it can start to do is actually draw moisture from the under layers of your skin. Ugh. So we really, really do not want to do that. It leaves it more dry than it was in the first place. So some humectants that I had in my bathroom were these face creams that I could find. So I have two face creams here from Medicaid, uh, which I actually don't use all that often because they, it turns out they make me break out, which is annoying because they're both new. <laughs> but I use this one the most, which is the La Roche-Posay Effaclar Duo. And all three of these contain things like hyaluronic acid and other different types of skin acids, which work as humectants for the skin. Another ingredient that I remembered, but I don't have an example of here is urea, which is the active ingredient in a common brand called Eucerin. So now you know how Eucerin works. So now that we have an idea of the three types of ingredients that you will find in moisturizers, and often they will have a bit of a combination of these different types of moisturizers, but more often than not, there is kind of one key mode of action. So there's a cream that says it's an emollient. Uh, it might still have some kind of occl occlusive ingredients in them, but for the most part, that is its kind of main, main mode of action. It is there to uh, replenish the moisture that is in your skin. Now I want to give you some practical tips of how to use moisturizers so that you do not run into the risk of something called moisturizer addiction. Because yes, I 100% believe that is a real thing and me personally, I have experienced it a lot. So my first and main tip with moisturizers is do not overdo it. Of course, moisturizers are there to help protect your skin, but ultimately we do want our own bodies to be able to create moisture for themselves in our skin naturally. So we don't want to use moisturizers so much that we actually start to communicate to our skin that actually you don't need to create your own moisture here anymore because it's gonna be getting it externally from somewhere else. So that is something that we really, really do not want. And it is a little bit of a balancing act as in 
you want to be putting on moisturizers so much that you know it keeps it supple and it keeps it uh, protected and in some cases also helps to kind of remove irritations and things like that but you do not want to do it so much so that your skin actually gets naturally drier underneath than what it was before. So how do we avoid this? How can we tell if our skin is sort of teetering on the edge of becoming perhaps a little bit dependent on these moisturizers? I would say when you put on a moisturizer and after it has rubbed off just naturally, if it feels drier or if you feel like you really need to put more on after that, perhaps even more so than you did right at the beginning, then you kind of know that actually perhaps you want to pull away a little bit and just kind of start spacing out the amount of time that you are using these moisturizers because like we said the aim of moisturizer isn't to replace natural oils or replace natural skin moisture it is to help support it and help to support its own natural creation of it so my second tip for you is to switch it up for a while i was very adamant that i wanted to downsize on all the different products and all the different things i had and yes you know, to an extent, I, I do still adhere to that. But at the same time, I do know that there are different types of moisturizers that I will need for different days and different environments and the different ways that my skin feel. And that's absolutely fine. And me personally, I would find if I actually started to use one type of moisturizer and use that over and over and over again, after a while, my skin would just start to react to it and get irritated. So the way that I would avoid doing this is by having a bit of a selection of different types of moisturizers that I would use depending on how my skin felt that day. I always try to reiterate this, your skin is a living organ, it will have different needs, different days, and we should be responding and really getting to know what our skin needs day-to-day -day basis, and not just kind of blindly putting on one thing and not noticing how it's reacting and things like that. So my third tip for you, something that I've said before, is to use moisturizers when your skin is damp. And the best time to use it is, of course, after you've been in the shower, if you've been in the bath, there's two reasons for this. Firstly, your skin loses quite a lot of moisture quite rapidly when it has been damp, so it protects it from losing any moisture. Secondly, it actually also locks in that moisture that you will have absorbed from being in water or in the shower. My third tip is for people like me who have eczema. I would say that the, the best times to be using moisturizer is firstly to, like I said, protect the healthy skin that you have. It is harder to use moisturizers to pull it back from a flare up because your skin is very sensitive, it gets easily irritated and moisturizers can make it more irritated. So we use moisturizers to prevent flare ups from happening in the first place. The second very good time to be using moisturizers is when you actually start to feel that a flare up is starting to come on. So if you feel that little bit of a tingle or a little bit of an itch, before it gets any worse, you put that moisturizer on, just shove it on and keep it there, put it on every single hour for until you need to, until the, you know, the tingle and the itchiness goes away. Because I have found personally that even sometimes if my, you know, if the actual itch and the redness doesn't go away with the moisturizer, just keeping the skin moist will make the skin much less irritated and keep it from, you know, getting that snowball effect when we get with flare ups, you know, the dryness makes the irritation worse, the irritation works make it more dry that sort of horrible flare up snowball that we don't want to get into. So I think that that was it. That's all I wanted to say about moisturizers. And uh, I hope you guys find this video interesting, useful, informative. If you have any other suggestions of things you want me to talk about or things you want me to look into, I would be more than happy to do so. Please leave a comment down below. And in the meantime, please press like, subscribe, <laughs> and all of the above. And I'll see you again very soon for another video. Bye.